Hello everyone. Welcome to our class here at csecmathtutor.com. Today we're going to be looking at relations. Now, what is a relation? Relation forms part of a big topic, relations, functions, and graphs, which appear on the CSEC syllabus and many other syllabus. A relation is a rule or a principle that describes a relationship between two objects. In mathematics, we call these two sets of objects the domain and the range. The domain is the independent set of objects, so they are independent, and the range is dependent on whatsoever the, the domain is. Um, we use mapping diagrams to represent different types of relations. So a mapping diagram is simply um, we use ovals or you could use a box, whatever it is, and you put a member in there and you use a arrow diagram and you say then X maps to Y or your domain maps to your range. And there are different types of um, relations. We're going to look at those different types of relations. So some relations, we can have a, what they call a one-to-one -one relation. And a one-to-one -one relation is very important because out of these come functions. But there are many types of one-to-one -one relations. And essentially, a one-to-one -one relation is that each element on the domain, we call them elements, is mapped onto a single value on the range. So the one maps to D, it doesn't map to anything else. Two maps to B, it doesn't map to anything else. So you don't have two arrows leaving any member of the domain to go to the range. There are examples of these in real life. Let's um, probably mention, mention some of them. Um, um, a simple one can be Christian marriage. Christian marriage, where you have one, one male to one female, and one male is mapped to one female. In Christian marriage, this is how it is. It can't be any other way. Um, there are other forms of marriage around the world, such as in Islam, where if you are righteous and if you have wealth, you, you may be allowed to have more than one wife. Or there are some cases in... in um, parts of Africa where the reverse is true, where a female can have more than one husband, but those, 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 it, it, those are different from here. In Christian marriage, it's just one to one. Um, you, can also, uh, you can also only have one mother. Um, so there, there are many different examples in life where you can only have one thing mapping to one thing, um, such as this, Christian marriage. So a one-to-one -one relationship, one-to-one -one relation is a very important one. There are others, such as a many-to-one, and in this case, you have many different things mapping to one thing. Um, before, th th there are other examples, such as, um, like I said before, where you can have many different wives to one husband. So. Um, many wives, many different wives to one husband, as in it can happen in some religions. And you can have a class to teacher. A teacher can have several classes. Several classes are mapped onto that one teacher. Um, you can have a situation where um, mother might have several children so you can have the children children and all of them map onto the same mother and these are many to one things i'm sure that if you think about it you can come up with a lot more of situations where many things map onto one in mathematics for example if we have Say we have um, one, two, three, four, six. Then all of these numbers are 
factors of 12. So each of these numbers would map on to 12, and each of these would be a factor. So we call this factors of 12. And the relationship between them is that the x is a factor of the y. So that's, a, that's the, the many to one mapping. <clears throat> the situation can also be turned around so that we can have a one to many mapping. So we can write down the same situation saying um, one, two, three, four, six, and have 12, and then we say 12 has these factors in terms of a many to one. Um, X, and this is our Y, we can have, have it that way. We can also have it in terms of, let's say, uh, four or nine, and we can find the square roots, and we can say, y is equal to the square root of x. So the square root of 4 is negative 2, and the square root of 4 is also positive 2. The square root of 9 is negative 3, and the square root of 9 is also positive 3. So this is another situation where you can have a many-to-one mapping, of course. You could put them in relationships where people are concerned, where um, one parent has several children, as in this case, or one teacher has many classes, um, many other situations that come up. Um, there are some situations not desirable, but they happen where one man has many partners or many partners having one man or woman, whatever it is when you turn it around. So the mappings are one to one, one to many, and many to one. There's also another type of mapping called uh, many to many, but there are not a lot of applications for it. A many to many mapping. In, in theory, it exists, but there are not a lot of practical applications for it, and you will not find many practical applications in mathematics for it either. So those are the types of mappings. Um, some of these mappings are what we call functions. Functions are special mappings where each element on your domain has only one element on the range. Um, so each domain value, so let me, so this is your x, this is your y. So each one has only one image. Each one has only one image. So for example, if you're looking at y is equal to the, the positive root of x, the positive root, then we can say, if we create some values over here, um, 1, 4, 9, 16, then these can only pair with one other thing on this side. That would be one, that would be two, that would be three, that would be four. Notice we're limit, limit, limiting it to the positive root only. And you can have many other situations where you have one to one. All right, so functions are special relations where each domain value, and this is important, has only one value on the range that gives us a function. So it's a relation first, but it's a special kind of relation where each domain value has only one image on the range. These are some examples of functions and functions mostly are written with these letters, y equal f of x. And it's read exactly, exactly that, y is a function of x. Notice that this f of x here is not f times x. It's not f multiplied by x, it's read as f y is a function of x, f of x, meaning that x is taken in as an input value into the function. And whatever you get here 
is the value of y. y there represents the range, and x here represents the domain. The f, the function, is whatever you would do to the x, the rule that describes whatever you do to the x to get the y. All right, let's move on. Sometimes you may be asked to identify if the graph of a function is, a, if it is actually a function or it's just a relation. So we can graph relations and we can graph functions. So how do we know when the relation is a function or if it's just a relation? One way to do it is to use the vertical line test. The vertical line test helps us understand if our relation is a function. And CXC may ask that at some point in the multiple choice paper. And so it, how do we know? Well, the vertical line test says we should take our function and draw vertical lines from the domain. The domain here would be your x-axis, whatever values are on it, and your range would be your y-axis. So we're supposed to draw straight lines. And if you draw straight lines from your, your domain, you would realize here that every time you draw a straight line through a point on your domain, that it's actually having more than one value on the range. So this one, that relation is an ellipse. And what we're finding here is that each domain value is having a value here and value here on the range. Each one is having a value here and here on the range. So this would be like saying y is equal to the square root of x with no limitation. So the square root of 9 would give you 3 and negative 3. So it, you probably have a positive 3 up here and uh, a negative 3 at the, at the other end. So positive 3 here, negative 3 here. And that value will connect to both, in which case because it has more than one, this one is not a function. So this one is not. If we take this one, <clears throat> we can draw lines downward. And yet, as you can see here, every time we take a value from our domain and take it up, it's only hitting one value on our line. Only one value. Because it is hitting only one value, this is a function. All right, here in this case, this is the graph of a quadratic um, function. Again, if you if you drop them down, you realize that they are each domain value is only hitting one value on the range. So this one is a function. And this one, however, if you take a single value here, you're gonna hit two values, and that's like the situation over here where you have y is equal to the square root of x without limitations. So you, you're getting two values. So nine is mapping to both three and negative three for argument's sake. And because of that, you can't have this situation being a function because it has to be unique. Only one arrow should leave here to go to that one. So this one is not a function either. So you can go through a function, draw a function, or having gotten functions that are drawn, you can look at them and use the vertical line test to see if that diagram, that graph, is a function or not. Um, some questions from CXE. These normally come on the multiple choice paper. So look at this one. Which of these, which of the following represents a graph of a function? Let's start here first. If you start with this value, on your graph. Notice that if you go either up or down, you, you're hitting two values, you're hitting one there and one here. So this single value, this single value here on the x-axis has two images on the y-axis. So this one is not, can't be because it's hitting two. Same situation here. This value here on the x-axis is hitting two values on the y-axis here and here. Can't have two. Um, and this one, well,
This one is not. Uh, this one, however, is a straight line. If you should draw a straight line through this, then you would see that it. Um, if you should if you should drop the the lines through on it, then each one is hitting only one. One one value. So this one definitely represents a function. Um, let's get back to this one. This the domain value hits one value there. This one doesn't have a value here. There's no value at all, nothing marked. This one has a value here. So what is what would be the value for this one on the range? It is not shown. It could be zero, but it's not shown. Therefore, this one is definitely not. This one, while it may be a function, it's not as clear as this one. So this one definitely is a function. This one is kind of hard to determine whether it is or not. Let's take another one. These now said normally pop up on your multiple choice paper. So again, you must have one thing coming from your X to your Y. One, only one. You can't have more than one coming from it. That's the definition of a function. Each domain element must have one element on the range. So let's look at this one. This is fine. It only has one. But this one has two. This one has two images on the range. So this one is not. This one has two coming from this one. So this one can't be either. In this one is the same situation. This one is mapped onto three. So it has, it can't have, cannot have that. And this one, well, this one, each element is mapped onto one. So this one, yes, is a function. Notice it says best illustrates. So this one is a, a function. In some situations, this one can be a function, such as in a, in a, um, quadratic situation, but this one definitely is the best. As the question says, best illustrates. This one is the solution for that. I hope you found this video useful. There will be more videos to come, so look out for them. And I hope this helps you continue studying hard.